Uh, Satyapal Jain, you said you were part of the Parliamentary Privileges Committee when you were an MP. What do you believe? Is this a fit case for a suspension for a session? Can something more be done that can send out a stronger message in some way that this is unacceptable language? Sir, I, I like to make two submissions. In my view, I have gone through the provisions of the, the discussions of the uh, Constituent Assembly. The privileges under 105 and 194 were given to the MPs and MLAs, keeping in mind mm -hmm. that they may be free to say whatever they want to say without any fear and favor. Mm -hmm. And that is why, if I remember it correctly, in the old parliament, I was a member when the old parliament was there, there is a shlok written in Sanskrit on the entry gate, which means either you do not enter this house, and if you enter this house, you speak only the truth, the truth, and nothing else but the truth. This was the intention when this privilege uh, was given to them, right. Article 105 and 194. But unfortunately, this has been exploited by members across the party line. I remember, see nowadays, just now, yesterday, Parliament has passed Women Reservation Bill. I was a member of Lok Sabha. In 1996, when Mr. Dev Gowda was the Prime Minister, he brought the Women Reservation Bill for discussion. A MP from the Samajwadi Party, I will not name him used very, very highly derogative language against uh, Sadhvi Uma Bharti. She started weeping. She came on the floor of the house, staged the dharna there. So I am saying whether it is of A party, B party or C party, this needs to be reconsidered. Article 105 also in my mind reads a re-look. You cannot give immunity to the MPs or MLAs of abusing others or saying whatever you want to deem fit. This needs a re-look and mm -hmm. I think all parties put together, they are the victim of one incident or the other, have a re-look at 105 and 194, mm -hmm. so that such type of incidents are not repeated in future. Sanjay Hegde, if you, do you also believe time has come to review parliamentary privileges? We cannot, what privilege does someone like a Ramesh Bajuri, for God's sake, deserve? The man is, has, has given the worst example of the kind of hate speech that some of our parliamentarians have normalized. Should someone like him be give, getting parliamentary privileges? Should Supreme Court re-look at it? Uh, Mr. Biduri may be an aberration, but yet he is a public representative. Mm -hmm. We voters have voted him into, uh, into parliament and we have voted him with all the privileges that parliamentary membership uh, confers. It is given for a very particular reason that people should be free to speak their minds in parliament. It is not given for the reason that people should say anything that comes into their minds. It is not given for the reason that people should indulge in hate speech or communal speech. But if you allow the thin edge of the courts coming in into parliament, then there could possibly be a clash of institutions mm -hmm. that is not healthy for a democracy either. So parliament may, needs so to respect it's time for itself. The, no, maybe the, it's parliament for the prime minister to, to then. Itself. It's maybe then. Therefore, it's the prime minister and the leader of as the leader of the Lok Sabha and the speaker who need to really take a tough line, because they are the ones who have to preserve the institution's integrity. Rajdeep, just one line, yes. just one line. It was the Hindi poet Dinkar who said, Samar shesh hai, nahi paap ka baagi keval vyad, jo tathast rahe, samay likhega unka bhi aparad. Those who sat like Bhishma and Dronacharya, silent when Draupadi was disrobed. History writes about them also. This is not a time to be thatras. This is a time for you to say enough is enough. Right. This man must be punished. Okay.